Good morning, guys. Another day in sunny Florida. Another chance to get some miles in the Super Blast. Let's go, baby. Gotta hit that bagel setting. Alright guys, so it turns out I was not effusive enough in my praise for the Super Blast. I think some people are a little bit upset here. Let's see. Make sure to run at least 50k in them before giving a proper review. Yes, I said I would break them in. So that's what we're going to do today. Run 20 more miles. This guy was upset that I got the wrong size. One of these guys said I was biased towards lower stack shoes. But there is one I wanted to address. This guy said, who wants shoes that encourage them to run slower? That is exactly the point of my training, guys. That is 100% the point of my training. I run slower than I can. I eat more than I need to. I don't sleep more than I need to. <laughs> That's the whole point of high mileage training. You run more than necessary to build that aerobic base. Oh, we got a mason out here. What up, dude? This is my favorite. You are just not used to it. What do you think about the Super Blasts? Are they overrated? Then we had some guy that is upset that I was putting out a video every day. I don't think he must be new here. 17 likes. Wow. If you don't have no haters, you ain't popping. <laughs> uh, shout out to Christopher, though. He normally does a first run review, workout review, long run review, and then a full run review. Yeah, dog. So today is going to be the workout review. So I'm thinking we do 20 mile double day. So 12 miles this morning after we get the black coffee in and get the system working, get the bagel down. And then another eight mile double this afternoon. Let's get it. All right, guys, look at this, man. Another beautiful morning in sunny Florida. I just, I love the palm trees. Waking up, walking out the front door, seeing the palm trees, seeing these little pink flowers. I don't know what they're called, but they match the super blast super nicely. Seeing all this is awesome. So this morning, we're gonna get another 12 miles and then go to the Oceanographic Institute. And like I said in the video yesterday, at the end of the video, I know some of you guys out there don't watch to the end. I don't blame you. 30 minutes is a long time, but shoes like these, I understand they require break-in. And like I said in the video, man, I actually think I cut this out of the video, but <laughs> I've said this a few different times. I like shoes that require a break-in because it mirrors some of what I like about running itself, that it takes time to get good at it. And it's not just everything roses out of the box. You got to put the work in. And so if a shoe requires me to put the work in it to give me something back, then I don't mind that. That's like the Boston 12, right? A lot of you guys know that was my favorite plated training shoe, favorite speed training shoe for endurance, probably of all time. And that's a shoe that required about 50 miles, 30 to 50 miles of break-in. And so some commenter, he wasn't very kind, by the way, might I add, said these, uh, he said these required about, I forget what the KM was, but I converted it in my iPhone and it, it spat out about 40 or 37 miles. And so today we're gonna get about 20 more miles in these guys. Hopefully we can break them in and we're gonna continue putting in the work. This is a, supposed to be a shoe designed to do that, so we will do that and report back how they feel. So plan for this morning is to get nice, smooth 12 miles out here. I mean, look at this, beautiful. Nice, smooth 12 miles in the Super Blast and then hopefully double back for another eight stroller miles tonight. And I don't think we're gonna do too much pace pickup. I do wanna do a workout in these at some point, but today is all about getting the time on feet. By the way, someone was criticizing me for my size choice. These fit absolutely perfectly. I switched between 10 and a half and 11. Both fit me generally pretty well. You guys are out here commenting about the metatarsal. Man, I just I just put the miles in, so <laughs> my metatarsal is good, guys. For anybody concerned about my metatarsal, we doing fine. Hey. 
All right, guys, let's see what we got here. 12 miles, exactly 7.30 pace, exactly an hour and 30 minutes. Consistency, 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 consistency. They raced me on the golf cart on the way back. I did not win, but we did get 4.37 pace <laughs> in the A6 Super Blast. This is not my trash, but I'm gonna be a good citizen and clean it up. How was it? All right, guys, so 12 miles with strides in the Super Blast. I think we were hanging out at around a 7.30, 7.40 pace for most of that. And then I did, so strides are short bursts of speed. So I did six rounds of about 20 seconds surging, working down to a four something pace by the end. And I don't get to that pace range often. So it's cool that we were able to do that in the Super Blast. And this is a great shoe for speed, man. I was cruising. I felt super smooth at the end. And that fast pace. Should I try a sub five mile in the Super Blast? All right, I'm going to the bathroom, man. Let's let's get this wrap up in quickly. All right, guys. So quick wrap up in the bathroom here because I'm about to turn into a pumpkin. Yesterday we did the wrap up with the camera on top of the Prius. The day before in the hotel gym. Today we had to do a in the guest bathroom here. But these felt great this morning for the aerobic pace. I think they're starting to break in a little bit. Actually, they did not feel great. They felt okay for the aerobic pace. They felt great for the speed at the end. So, so those strides starting out at around 540, working down to 430 pace. These felt amazing for that, much better than I anticipated. So we're gonna have to do some faster speed work in these guys. And then for the time on feet, they do protect my legs. But it's almost like they work my feet a lot. Like I'm just, there's a ton of foam. And I don't know if I'm just not used to running in this much stack or if this FF Turbo again needs a little bit more time to break in, but it does feel like I'm still fighting against the foam a little bit. And now let's do a little bit of a push test here just to see. To the push test, it seems like it's the same firmness. We now have, what is it, 29 miles and some of these shoes start to break in, the shoes that require break in around 30 miles. You can see here, we're starting to get some good creasing on the bottom foam here, but not too much on this Piba or race foam up here in this FF Turbo. So we're gonna go to the Oceanographic Institute and I'm gonna wear these as my sneaker today to see how they do around town. And then I'll pop in later for an eight mile double, but 29 miles so far, I'm really looking forward to see how they do up at that 40, 35 mile range, see if they break in a little bit, even a little bit more. But this morning was a nice shoe for those strides. I really wanna get down to the five minute pace range again in these, cause that was fun. All right, let's do it. Quick shower time. All right guys, so we got the super blast on for our trip to the Oceanographic Institute. And you see, I got my noon on the left here and my water on my right. And hopefully we can break these in a little bit more with some walking. Wow, it is sunny. So we got so many comments yesterday. You got to break them in. You got to break them in. I know I said that in the video. I'm doing my best. I'm doing putting up 20 miles a day to break them in. And we're going to do a little walking. Pull up with the dad swag. Patagonia baggies and the super blast. Let's get it. What do you got on today? I have on my clock. Dave's bread, just egg, vegan sausage, courtesy of Supple Kitchen. Fire. Elevators do not go side to side. 
They do not reach out and come back in. If an elevator... Oh, Mace, it's coming, it's coming. Oh, that is slimy. <laughs> Mace, Mace, do you want me to help you? It's not scary, look. Oh, she's critiquing my form. Okay, we keep the hands in the water. That was me. I, I'm, I apologize. That was pretty fire. Stingray touching review. A plus. And Super Blast. We're breaking them in out here, putting in the work in the Oceanographic okay. Center. Running shoe spotting. We got the vibrant pink Nike Invincible 3 over there. That colorway is popping off. The Mary Kay colorway. Ghost 15. No surprise. See some gel cumulus over there. Oh, we just missed it. Trust me, there were gel cumulus somewhere over there. What are those? <laughs> These things are kind of cool, kind of weird. These kind of look like zebra fish. This one is cool because it's got some character to it. You can tell it lives a good life. Man, all these fish, but only one salmon. Fire. That is a sea turtle, okay? That thing is huge. Yes. All right, guys, so we are back in the car blasting the AC here after the Florida Oceanographic Center. And this was actually a great shoe to walk around in, to be on my feet for two hours. I'm surprised because it's a very tall stack shoe. Of course, if your main criteria for a shoe is walking, I wouldn't get these, but it can do the trick. So walking review, nice work. All right guys, 2.29 PM. Time for run number two. We'll take a few more bites of the sandwich here. Man, and it's another beautiful afternoon. 2.31 PM. It is hot out here. We are gonna be sweating. We're gonna need our electrolytes after, but run today is gonna be eight miles at a nice aerobic pace we got the shirt off and again so now the the whole goal is to see how these do on a double run day how protective are they and the last time i did one of these double run days with the same shoe was the socket endorphin pro 4 i've also done with the new Orleans rebel v4 i'm trying to think of the other ones i did it with one more shoe the hoka mach 6 I did it with that one too. So I've had, this is the fourth or fifth time I'm doing the double run day with the one shoe, getting it to 20 miles in a day. So this will be an interesting comparison. How does the Super Blast do versus some of those other shoes? All right guys, we gotta be quick. Efficiency is the name of the game here. I'm trying to bang these out so we can get back to do some pool time with the kids this afternoon. Perfect day for some pool time. All right, what do we get? 8.44 miles, 752 pace. Very hot, very hot. Wow, I'm hot. All right, I'm gonna shower, and then I wanna talk you through how these perform for the 20 miles today, and also why I do these 20 milers. All right, guys, so we had a long day, not one, but two family outings, and not one, but two runs. So first run, we did 12 miles in the morning in the ASIC Super Blast year, and then second run, we also did in the A6 Super Blast, eight miles. We are now sitting at 37 miles on this guy. I'm not sure if the foam is breaking in at all and it's given me a very consistent ride throughout all these miles. There's a nice bounce to it, there's some pop, but again, like I said yesterday, this is not the most forgiving, comfortable ride for my normal everyday aerobic paced efforts. And for a lot of these runs, guys, it's making me feel like I wanna run faster than I normally would. So both of these runs today, I was down in the seven range. And for my second run, I'm almost always in the eight minute range. Today I didn't do it with the stroller, but first run I was at about a 740 pace for 12 miles with some faster strides. And that second run, we hit it at around a 750 pace. Now the biggest surprise with the Super Blast so far has been how great it is for fast running, top end speed. When I did those strides today in the shoe at about a 540 to 440 pace, this was an amazing shoe for that work. One of the best 
fast shoes that I've used right up there with the Adidas Boston 12, right up there with the shoe like the Adidas Takumi Sen. It really came alive when I was running fast. So I'm excited to take it for some more fast efforts, but I'm also trying to get it up to 100 miles so we can see how it does with some high mileage. Now, the other surprise of the shoe is how it's responded for these high mileage days. It doesn't feel like the most natural shoe to put in a 20 mile day, which is a little bit surprising because of how much cushion and how much stack you have here. Now, I wouldn't use a shoe like the Adidas Boston 12 for a 20 mile double. I might use a shoe like the SC Trainer V2, and I did use the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, but thinking about what this goes up against out of my favorite shoes, I probably wouldn't use the Adidas Boston 12 for a 20 mile double, and I thought this was gonna be a little bit more forgiving, a little bit more protective, which it is, but feel like it made the work of running a little bit easier. And so far, this isn't giving that experience to me. Maybe we need some more miles to break it in. We're now sitting at 37 miles, which that's in the zone for when, especially with the race day foam shoe, for when it should feel broken in. So I know you guys say you gotta give it time, so I'm gonna continue pouring on the miles in this guy and we'll see. But so far, through these 20 miles, some of them at an aerobic pace, which for me is around that 745, eight minute range. Some of those miles felt like a chore in the shoe. Now we are on extremely flat ground here in Florida where I normally run in a very hilly neighborhood. I can get a thousand feet of elevation gain in a run and down here it is a pancake. So it's a different type of running. It's also a lot harder, more humid than I'm used to. My double today was probably around 75, 80 degrees. Normally in North Carolina right now, it's probably 50 to 60. So that's probably playing a factor as well. Maybe it's the fatigue, but I think I can do a pretty good job isolating those things when evaluating a shoe. And it seems like this shoe, even compared to something like the Rebel, which I ran in for the first run when we got down here, this feels like it's making me work a little bit more to run at a faster pace. And now that's the thing, because it does encourage that faster pace, it's not like the effort is higher to sustain a pace, it's actually the reverse. And one thing the shoe has done really well throughout all these miles today is it is very consistent. And once you lock into a pace, once I found my pace for a run, 740, 750, this thing just held that pace like none other. And my splits were so even because of that flat ground, but this was a really nice shoe to just cruise holding the same pace now the other big surprise of the day, and this is not something I take lightly, was how good this shoe is for walking. Whenever I evaluate daily trainers, whether it's the Rebel, whether it's something like the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4, whether it's something like the Nike Vomero, I look at how do they do for normal everyday life stuff. And the reason is a lot of us will buy a running shoe and then we're parents, we have busy lives, we gotta go to the grocery store before or after a run, we gotta go pick up our kids. And if we're running for 30 minutes, then we have the shoe on our feet for another hour or two before or after that, it does make a big difference how the shoe feels for non-running activities. And today I was absolutely blown away by how comfortable the ASICS Super Blast was. And it's not just comfortable for an up-tempo shoe, comfortable for a speed training shoe, comfortable for a running shoe. This is legitimately one of the most comfortable all-around sneakers that I've used for walking around when we were at the Ocean, what was it called? Oceanographic Center earlier today. This was, I would actively choose to wear this again, not even when I'm testing it. And so for dinner, let me, let's see this. So for dinner, I put on my other favorite running shoe for walking, which is the Brooks Ghost Max. This is my current favorite to just throw on when I need a sneaker for going around town. It's got a nice stack of this, not super critical EVA, but standard EVA here. It's a really awesome, comfortable shoe as well. It's got a nice little rocker up here on the front, but first thing, holding it in my hand versus the Super Blast. The Super Blast is a lot lighter, and this is a half size heavier, and this is a half size bigger than that Brooks Ghost Max. And something about this shoe is just more comfortable than the Brooks Ghost Max. After wearing the Super Blast to the Ocean Center earlier today, the Ghost Max felt heavy, it felt awkward, it felt a little bit clunky, and I was completely surprised because in my video yesterday, and I will eat my words on this, I said, do not buy a Super Blast for a walking shoe. I was wrong, guys. You could buy the Super Blast for a walking shoe. I still think, and this is an important part, for $200, that is not a good value deal. You don't need to spend $200 to get a good walking shoe. But if you want a shoe that can do some serious running and walking, that's where the Ghost Max comes into play. Now, the conversation about value is still one that is it's high up on the list of things I wanna talk about, and it's just racking my brain. Is this shoe a good value? I have not loved the ride of it so far. I've liked it and I can see the elements in the pieces and the 
fragments of things that make it great, right? I think this is going to be a great shoe for faster running. I think this is going to be a great shoe for speed workouts. However, that's what plated trainers are so great for. They're awesome for faster running. They're awesome for speed works. With this shoe, I was hoping to get a little bit more of capability for everyday runs, relaxed running, recovery runs, slower efforts, because that's what you're gonna pay that 40 to $50 price premium for. So as of now, I would rather have the Vomero or the 1080 on my feet. And I also understand that's because of my high mileage. And this is one of the last things I wanted to chat through with you guys tonight is the reason I do this high mileage style of training, right? So this has been the number one most effective thing that has improved my fitness is piling on the mileage, continuing to get out there for an hour to 90 minutes at least every single day and run twice most of the days. And what that does is a few things, but it improves recovery. So I can do a 26.2 mile long run, get out there the next day and run 10 miles because my body is used to all this aerobic effort. It also makes it easier for me to run longer distances and not get fatigued and I can run faster for longer. So for example, today I haven't dipped into sub five minute pace range at all within the past few months, but today I wanted to race the golf cart because Charlie and the kids were in it and I wanted to see how fast I could go and I dipped into the 430s and felt completely fine. And so running a lot of mileage will do that. It will make you recover faster. It will let you run longer long runs and faster paces during training with lower effort. And so a shoe like the Super Blast in my high mileage style of training, there's not a clearly defined role for it because I run so many miles at an aerobic pace that is way slower than my max for a 90 minute run. So I could, if I were only running one run every day, I could go out and hammer a 90 minute run at a 640 pace every morning, maybe not every morning, but a lot of the mornings out of the week. Instead, I run that closer to eight minutes most of the days. And so that's why I'm taking a little bit of issue with the shoe. It encourages me to run fast and the value proposition is that it helps you run faster for everyday runs. And that's not something that I subscribe to. I don't need to tell you guys about zone two. I don't need to tell you guys about running slow to run faster, but that is a philosophy that I subscribe to. I've modified it a little bit and I've taken it to the extremes with how much I'm running. But a shoe like the Super Blast on everyday runs doesn't quite fit into that framework. Now, of course, we'll put some more miles in it. I'm gonna take it to 100. We'll see if it softens up, gets a little bit more pop. But as of right now, this seems like a shoe that is gonna be best for those faster runs. And of course, we will do some pace work in our long run, maybe this either this weekend or next weekend. I do have another plated shoe that I kinda wanna take out for the long run this weekend, but we'll see. So overall though, I'm really enjoying the shoe for faster running. If I were in a period of training where I wanted to hammer some steady zone pace miles every day that getting closer to marathon pace, I would absolutely be loving the shoe for a daily trainer. And I know a lot of you guys like using the shoe for all your runs. I am not seeing this as a do it all type of shoe at the moment. Maybe that can change with some more miles. This seems like a little bit more of a specialized shoe, which for that $200 price point, that's not what I was expecting. And there are better value options, value meaning lower price, more bang for your buck than this, like the Boston 12, even the Saucony Endorphin Speed. I'm not gonna say the four, but Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, Hoka Mach 6. All those are gonna give you similar pop as this shoe, not necessarily the same protection, not necessarily as good for going 90 minutes, two hours, but at a much lower cost. That Mach 6 is 140. And so the last thing I wanted to say today was most versatile running shoes of all time, my top five. I was thinking about this in my run today because I was saying, is the Super Blast one of the most versatile shoes? And I do not think so, but my top five list from yesterday, I have to revise because I left off the Hoka Mach 5. So that's gonna lead us off here. Hoka Mach 5 on Cloud Stratus, Saucony Triumph 20, Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, and there's one more, an Adidas Ultra Boost. So those are the top five most versatile shoes of all time. If this shoe can soften up and feel better for recovery pace miles, feel a little bit better for aerobic pace miles, not feel like I have to put so much effort into the shoe every time I strap it on, and because it's making me feel like I wanna run fast, then I'll put it in that top five most versatile shoes category. But as of now, this seems like a specialized long run and speed training shoe, which is awesome for marathon training, but not a shoe that I would wanna lace up every day. Although we're gonna keep getting some more miles in this guy to get it up to 100. All right guys, so there you have it. I appreciate you watching and I'll be back tomorrow with another video.